Hi everybody, thanks for joining us here at Power Mods. I'm Louis Skibo. Today, I'm going to install some Evans coolant in my razor here. Now, some of you might be thinking, why would I change out the regular 50-50 coolant in there for another product? But there's a good reason for that. I'm gonna go over that with you. Now, I was first sold on this Evans waterless coolant when I installed it in my snowmobile, and we did further testing on my Polaris XLT where we actually disconnected all coolers on it and ran it up to 265 degrees. It was unbelievable, we tore the motor down, we had no problems at all in the motor, no cracks, no busted head gaskets, I was very impressed. So this Evans waterless coolant is going in my RZR UTV here and it's going in my truck in the future, it's gonna be our next video, but today we wanna to get this in. There are many benefits to switching from your normal 50-50 coolant to this Evans waterless coolant here. Number one being that there's no water in it. Because there's no water in it, the boiling point is a lot higher. Now that has many implications that we'll get into as I discuss this product a little bit more. But for us ATVers and UTVers, there's some really beneficial points to this product. Number one being that since there's no water in it, we have no buildup of pressure in the system. And when there's no pressure, it means that we can actually run a sealed system. So if we're taking this deep underwater, we don't have to worry about our overflow bottle taking water in on it. Now for you guys running in really dusty and dirty environments, in the sand, in the mud, running through the swamps. One of the biggest issues we have is mud and dirt and weeds in our radiator. Now, it doesn't take long for that thing to clog up and that starts to affect your heating and your cooling your system. And at some point it actually just cuts the radiator right out of your system. Your machine is gonna overheat. So now what is overheating? Well, with your typical coolant, 50-50 mix, it's got water in it, half of it is water. Water in a pressurized system starts to boil at about 225 degrees, 230 degrees. And when that happens, the water, the coolant around your cylinder walls starts to actually boil, vapors created, and the ability for the fluid to actually conduct or to draw the heat away from the cylinder wall is pretty much diminished, it's not there. And that's when you start to do damage to your motor. Now with this product here, it doesn't boil to 375 degrees, you're not gonna have that issue. When you overheat your machine, you're actually still drawing the temperature away from the cylinder wall, you're not doing the damage, and that's the most important thing. Now, along with the benefit of not destroying your engine in an overheat situation, this Evans coolant does a couple other things. It's non-corrosive, it's reduced toxicity, so if your neighbor's cat drinks it, you're not gonna run into an issue, and it's good for the lifetime of the vehicle, and pretty much for your lifetime as well. If you wanna pull it out of your UTV and put it in another one, or your snowmobile, and just keep doing that from one machine to another, it's good because it actually doesn't break down. And also, you're not going to have to change your coolant like you would a normal 50-50 mix on a regular basis. So all we need to do now is swap out that old coolant and get the Evans in there, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Well, the first thing you got to do, you got to get that 50-50 coolant out. You don't want any water left in the system because that water, we don't like it, it expands. We don't want that at all. So we got to suck out the old fluid, put the new stuff in. Got to start from the top. I've got my handy little Liquivac here. This thing is great. I'll show you how much I love this. really is that simple. Put that down in there. It just takes the mess out of the job. I really like this handy little system. It's down as low as I can get it in that hose and it's actually pulling most of the fluid out of the radiator. Right on. I want to get into my overflow bottle, make sure there's nothing left in there. But we've taken a good look at the cooling system on this machine. Now you don't have to actually lift it up to do the work, but we're going to do it. Helps the cameraman out a little bit. So I've taken the coolant down as low as I could. Everything's out of the radiator. I'm going to the next lowest point here that I can get in this hose. Pull that back. There's going to be some spillage, so be prepared for that. Put a little drain pan down. Now, before you really get into any of this, depending on how old your machine is, what kind of abuse you've put it through, 
your cooling system is only really as good as the condition that it's in. So you want to make sure that you've gone through everything, make sure that all your hoses are in good shape, your clamps are in good shape, all the plastics are in good shape, and of course your radiator is in good shape. Now this hose in this RZR actually runs along the bottom of the frame. So right now, as I'm pulling it out, the coolant's coming out of the motor, going through the water pump, down to the bottom of this hose. So it sort of keeps filling up on me. I also pulled off this upper radiator hose, did the same thing, used my liquid vac, sucked everything out of there. I'm pretty confident that most of the coolant is actually out of this system, but I'm gonna use a little bit of compressed air. I've run a tube off the lower rad hose into a little drain pan there. I'm just gonna pressurize it, see what we get out of it. So I'm confident that I've gotten all the 50-50 coolant out of there. I removed the top radiator hose and the bottom hose, sucked everything out as best I could, and then I pressurized the system with some compressed air, blew everything out the bottom, and nothing else was coming out. Now, originally I'd taken off the back panel of the RZR here, or RZR for you Americans, and I had a bunch of things ready to pull all that apart, get in there, dig around, pull the rest of the coolant out, but you know what? If we're pushing air through here, and all the coolant's done coming out of there, there's nothing left in the system. So I'm just gonna put these back up, hook them back up, and then we're gonna put the new Evans coolant in, and we're gonna burp the system, pretty easy. It's nice when a machine is new like this, all these little parts and pieces go on and off so easily. But that doesn't mean that it won't be easy for you guys with your machines because this is very accessible on these little machines. They're not buried too deep, pretty easy. There we go. That's done, that's done. Now this rad filler cap is actually higher than the motor. So, for the most part, this should just fill right up to the top. We'll just have to run it a little bit, burp the system. That's good, hello. I knew that would happen. I don't like running it too long when it starts to go down, so I just top it up as I go. So I've done a couple quick little burps on this system. Now I'm just gonna take it outside, let it warm up, make sure everything's good, top it up, and we're good to go. The cool thing about this coolant is that after it's warmed up, I still pop the cap off, check it. It's not gonna blow all over the place. I had the coolant level right at the top, and I was checking out the temperature gauge on the dash, and as soon as it hit about 183, the thermostat opened, dropped right down, so we'll top it back up. You guys don't actually have to do this, but we're gonna take it a step further. I wanna see how much water from the old 50-50 coolant we have left in this. And I'm just gonna use my handy little refractometer here, and I'm gonna test it. All you do is you put a little dab on there. All right, so using the refractometer and Evan's numbers, Right now I'm running less than 1% water in that cooling system and that's exactly the way we want it. According to Evans, you want less than 5%, so we're optimal right now. So I'm gonna box this up, I'm gonna to talk to you guys again. Now just to show you that there's no pressure in the system, I'll fire it up, it is warmed up. It's at 200 degrees right now, the fan's on actually. All right. That's it. No pressure in there at all. If 
for some reason you're on the trail and you need to put normal coolant in it, you can totally do that. You can mix them with no issues at all. If you've ended up with water in there and you want to get it out, all you have to do is just drain the coolant out, leave it on a hot plate. In no time the water's gone, it'll just boil right off. Get that coolant right back on. All right, guys, I got to thank you for coming. A very easy installation. Without the camera work, this probably would have only taken about 10 minutes, a little bit of cleanup, and that's it. You've seen that there's just, it doesn't boil. You can take the cap off at 190, 200 degrees. It's actually pretty amazing. But the benefits of this product are outstanding. For all you guys running ATVs and UTVs, you are going to run into overheat situations, especially running down south or in the mud like what we do here. We play, we get that radiator clogged up, it's full of stuff. You're going to run in an overheat situation, and this is the kind of product you want to have on board. A lot of guys are going out, they're buying bigger capacity radiators, hooking all that stuff up, hoping to bring the temps down. But honestly, you just need to run Evans Cooling in it. So i got to thank you for coming. Make sure you check us out on Facebook. Check out evanscooling.com for more information on their products. And we'll see you again here at PowerMods.